All right, we're gonna jump right into this one. And um, have you ever wondered, or have you ever felt kind of exasperated because your children are constantly bickering and it's just dri driving you up the walls and you absolutely don't know what to do about it. So we're gonna talk about uh, that in this episode. If you hear the background noise again, I have a 150 pound puppy walking around wanting my attention. So. This should be an interesting episode as well. <laughs> For those who don't know me, my name is Danielle C. Baker. I am the founder and CEO of Being Connected. I'm also an early childhood educator and I've been working for over 20 years with families and children. I specialize in effective and value-based parenting and I help parents kind of navigate their realities of uh, their role as a parent. And uh, I will get, I'll do an episode on um, what value-based parenting means. I realize it's not a very traditional way of dealing with parenting, but I'll get to that. But you got to remember, don't get it, you know, get it twisted. Uh, when you work with me, we're going to be putting your child's needs first. So you know, put the ego and pride aside and we're going to get right to it. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. And before we get started, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you're listening or watching from. And of course, season two, this episode is brought to you by the Self-Esteem Doctor Online Academy with the wonderful, amazing, beautiful Dr. Simone Alicia has uh, so much resources to help your child with self-esteem, confidence, there's some workshops, there's some free literature. Uh, so it's really worth having a look at. It really does work great with what I work with. And that's why I, I love to have her, um, her resources because they really do help for children, teenagers, even adults. I do kind of use some of her stuff on myself actually. So I'll add the um, link in the description for you to have check that out um, definitely help you a lot especially with your children and uh so we'll jump right in again i'm gonna kind of go overview there was the last episode i did i talked about positive discipline and how to use that effectively when your child is hidden that is a, a major issue for parents uh, we don't know how to handle it we get very reactive and um we're afraid to get judged it's a, it's an issue it's it's a really an issue um so we're going to jump right in again, but this time with, with siblings that are just constantly fighting. That's just going to drive you up the walls. You know, if you've had brothers and sisters growing up, I mean, you're constantly at each other's throats. Most of the time you get along, but a lot of the times you get on each other's nerves. That is our job as siblings. I am a grown woman, but I still like to bug my, my brother and sister. So uh, we're going to jump in today on, and again, I want to kind of, give you a full disclosure on a positive discipline or positive reinforcement. A lot of people kind of, um, <laughs> they don't agree with it. Uh, we, we have to forget that uh, we, we cannot forget that uh, we've been raised uh, in a different form of discipline. And a lot of people are, are not keen on uh, giving positive discipline a try because it's it's something nobody knows <laughs> how to handle it. We weren't raised with that. Our parents weren't raised with that. Our grand is the only way to teach them right from wrong. And uh, my note to that, and I used to believe that as a parent, it's only when I started professionally <laughs> working with children and other people's children that I saw the benefits of positive discipline. And um, this is the only way that I can explain it. If it really worked, if the negative discipline really worked, we wouldn't have any issues. We're not making our children softer. We're not making the next generations uh, irrelevant or useless. Quite the contrary, we're, we're teaching them how to handle their emotions in a healthy way. So if you think about what the stuff we're dealing with, the stuff our parents dealt with, uh, I'm all about breaking generational patterns and cycles, and this is definitely one of it. So try to keep an open mind to this. You're not softening your child if you're using a positive way of handling their bad behavior. So let's start into it. What is, what is positive discipline? Um, 
there's kind of three, I like to, to describe it into three different um, steps. The first step is you're gonna have to listen. First of all, you need to, to get in, aligned with your child. You need to tune into your child here to see okay, what happened, what's going on, what's their thought process. You're kind of scoping uh, the line. And I think in the last episode, I referred it to the Terminator and Robocop and the bionic man. When you come in, look at the bigger picture, you're coming in, you're already frustrated. Your kids are constantly at each other's throat. It's driving you up the walls. You're coming in there. So stop that, stop and kind of look, okay, doo -doo 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 -doo. what's going on? Start with that. You need to listen, what's going on? And of course, they're all going to talk over each other. So you, you're going to have to try to take time to listen. And then you're going to have to validate their emotions. And, and those are the two steps. Listen attentively. Uh, validate their emotions before you jump in, down, jump down their throats. Uh, and those two steps will turn off everybody off of positive disorder. yeah that's not gonna work yeah yeah okay i'm gonna have to listen to them bicker or yeah i'm gonna say i understand that you like to pull your sister's hair but that just means that that's a bad emotion like come on right right <laughs> i was like that i mean like, you gotta be kidding me no i was like stop it or or else um so the reason why these two don't work right off the bat is because of the third one. We overlook the third step. The third step is how are you reacting to the situation? That's the number one indicator. And I never put it first because you, then you get into your own emotions going, well, I'm the adult, I know best. They're gonna listen to me because I'm the adult because I said so. So <laughs> we take it down a notch. First of all, you're gonna listen. You're gonna validate the emotion because you're thinking there's a reason. The reason you're thinking they keep bickering is not gonna be the reason they're actually bickering. So listen, validate, and then tune in. How am I reacting to this? If you're coming in hot, because we do, we come in hot. Those kids are hot, you're coming in hot. What are you teaching them, right? Children don't learn from words, they learn from your actions, they imitate you. So if you're coming in hot, if you can't handle your emotions in a healthy way, you're teaching your children how to handle their emotions. What are you teaching your children? So how are you reacting? That's the big wake up call. This is what I mean when you need to put your pride and ego aside, not because you're too much of a pride, proud person. I didn't know how to say that. It's nothing like that. It just means that we are going through our own emotions. These kids are constantly at each other's throat and I'm pulling my hair out. So of course I'm going to react. But the best thing to do is, okay, how am I reacting to this? Take a deep breath, go in. This is the thing that works the best for positive. And this is, I'm talking from my own experience. I'm going to have 20 years of this with other people's children. And the reason why I keep saying with other people's children is because I'm not calm, cool, and collected when I'm dealing with my own children because now I am emotionally invested in this. And the children that I work with for my job, at the end of the day, I hand them back to their parents, right? So I'm more like an auntie. So it's easier for me to take that step back and not react because yes, it's gonna affect me when you're in a class of, of 30 kids and they're all at each other's throats. That is, you know, on a day that I have a headache, I'm not feeling well, that is gonna get to me, but I can let it go because I'm not emotionally invested as much as I am with my own children. My, my children are grown now, so it's, but they still, they can still get under my skin and they will test me. <laughs> they're old enough now where they can say, we'll see. Wonder, you know, she studied psychology for so long. Let's see how, <laughs> Where, where her breaking point is, right? So the first thing you need to do, and I'm going to do an example with you today, it's, it's going to be a little awkward, um, is you don't react. Because remember, that third step, the one that will make the two first step work is how are you reacting? To it? You don't react, you pause. There is incredible power in a pause. And if you don't believe me, we're going to do it right now. I'm only gonna do five seconds just to show you how 
awkward and how effective a pause is. I'm going to start with five seconds because those who are watching the video on YouTube, you're going to see me staring at you. But those are for those of you who are listening on audio, you're going to see you go like, okay, the, like, is my volume off? The, you know, <laughs> so I'm going to pause for five seconds. You ready? Let's do this. All right, that was five seconds. A little awkward for those who are watching the video. Those who are just listening in on an audio, I'm just staring at the camera. So whoever is watching the video is watching me stare at them. Uh, I, I'm going to do 10 seconds. I'm going to try to do the mother look. I don't know if that'll work. But uh, if you really want to see, I, I don't think I can do the mother look because that only comes out when you've had enough and your kids know that look. But I'm going to try to be serious. And... Um, for 10 seconds. It might be worth for you to go on YouTube and look at this episode after just to see what I look like. I'm curious to know. Let's do 10 seconds. So here we go. All right. How awkward was this? Right? It was awkward for me. That's 10 seconds. You can go 30 seconds. And honestly, that's if you do this in a meeting, let's say in a meeting, try that. 30 seconds, you'll have everybody fidgeting, shifting. Everybody's getting nervous. The whole body language kicks in. There's a lot of anxiety that comes to this. So you come into the room, wherever they are, and you just stop and pause and stare at them. That was five seconds again. Trust me, you're going to get a, a, how can I say this? Your children are going to stop. This, it's better than yelling. You're coming in and go, all right, what's going on again? Bah, 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 bah. You stop and you just stare at them. Trust me, they're going to stop. After that five seconds, they're going to stop. You're going to freak them out. They're expecting you to freak out. You're going to freak them out. So pause. Um, the other reason why the pause is so effective, again, the first one is you're going to creep your, you're even going to, freak your, your your spouse out if you have a spouse they're they're not everybody in the house is going to get very uncomfortable so it works on the spouse too by the way um the the second reason why this is so important is because uh, if you're coming in hot you are in no way able to reason properly at that point you are hot you're not handling your your emotions properly so you're not going to handle the situation well at all so that pause is going to give you that time for you to to do that third step to how am i reacting to this and just breathe this is your your zen time as you're instilling fear in your children because you went completely silent this is your zen time you're like ah. <laughs> right but it, it you're also teaching your children that at that moment, this is what you need to do. When you're feeling hot, you're not doing well at all. You're not handling your emotions properly. You need to stop and check in. So again, children learn from example. They don't learn from words. So that little pause is going to get them to learn how to properly handle the situation. And eventually you don't, you won't need to step in anymore. When I say there's an investment, this is not going to work overnight. If I told you today, if you're right-handed and say from now on, you're only signing your name with your left hand, your signature is going to look like crap for a while before you actually get it to look somewhat like your right hand signature. So um, it's the same. Children only learn how to handle their, their emotions from you teaching them. So, so if right up until this point, your children have not been handling their emotions properly, it's because you haven't taken the time to teach them how to handle it properly. So again, that's a little, a little hurt to the ego and pride there. Um, you haven't taught them, it's not their fault. Whose fault is it? Mm. So it, it just, just say that. And then again, you're gonna go in, in and say, okay, this was not appropriate. If you're really, really hot, you did that pause and you're still hot, you can tell them, listen, this is, this, is, this is stopping today. I'm done with this, but right now I'm so hot or I'm so mad that you're gonna have to give me a minute to calm down and then we're gonna talk about this. That's another, I mean, there's, you're gonna reword your sentence according to the age of your children, of course, but that's basically the message you wanna get across.
this was not acceptable. This is not going to happen. We're going to find a way to, we're going to fix this. But right now I'm too hot. I'm, I'm too mad. I'm too upset. I need to calm down. Give me a minute and then we'll talk about this. Um, okay. So now we're specifically going into uh, kids bickering and siblings bickering. So this is where when we're coming in hot and we're trying to stop it, we will inadvertently take a side. So for example, you're coming in, and again, when I was saying you're coming in hot, you're not thinking properly. You're not in a state of mind where you can reason properly or look at that bigger picture. So you're gonna say, okay, the, bit, the older one hit the little one. So you're gonna go, with, why would you hit the little one? You're grown, they're a baby. You're taking a side, right? You're trying to reason, but you've actually told your older one that the little one's more important. So that's gonna keep causing, you're, you're creating the, the, uh, the issue. Um, if you can, again, in the last episode, I talked about hitting. So of course, if you if the children are safe, they're not eating each other, not biting each other, they're not hitting each other. They all have their hair on their head. Um, don't try not to intervene. Just being there watching is going to change the dynamic. They're probably going to come to you and say, well, he did this and he did this and blah, 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 blah. Don't intervene. Um, and if you, but obviously in the beginning, you are going to have to intervene. So if you do have to intervene, the important thing is not to take sides. You put them both in the same boat. So you don't know the whole story yet. We're going to have to calm down. You're going to hear everybody's side of their story. But right now, we're going to put everybody on the same boat. So there's no favoritism. Even if there isn't favoritism, you're not favoring somebody. You're not taking a side. Everybody's on the same boat. What does that mean? I'll give you a situation. Um, these kids are always fighting over the same toy. All right, that happens. This is for the younger ones. They're always fighting over the same toy. They're always fighting over the same chair. They're always fighting. They're fighting over something constantly. This is a recurring thing. Not taking sides, or, you know, intervening by putting everybody in the same boat would look like, well, this is constant. This isn't working. So no one gets to play with this toy or nobody gets to sit in that chair. You're putting them in the same boat. Doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong until we can sit down, calm down and figure out how we can fix this, nobody gets it. So now you're kind of telling them, well, you know, this is what's happening. Every time this happens, none of you will get it. So. Is that, a, is that a good way to handle it? You're going to get, when you, you do that, the first thing you're going to do is they're going to start blaming each other. But, well, that, it's your fault. That now we blah, 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 blah. Uh, they're going to get angry. But eventually, as time progresses and you holding your ground, they're going to come up with a solution. So every time, you know, you tell them, every time this toy comes out, you guys fight over it. And in the end neither one of you, this is when you're sitting them down. So, okay, well, every time this toy comes out, you fight over it. And in the end, neither one of you gets to play with it. So what can we do so that every single one of you gets a chance to play with it? Because right now your way is not working. So throw it back at them. What can we do so that you guys, both of you will get a chance to play with it? So uh, let them come up with solutions with their little younger you need to lead uh, the conversation a little bit more so you know you can say okay well would you think taking turns will work do you think that you could do a rotation you know time wise do you have it in the morning whatever don't give them the solutions but give them examples and they will work it out and say okay this is your decision now you're holding them accountable this is the other thing you're teaching them is accountability you came up with this solution we're trying it. If it doesn't work, we got to find another solution. This is, you know, and if they bicker and say, well, if it happens again over the same toy, say, hey, 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 you guys found the solution. Why is this still happening? It's their fault now. And, you know, it's, well, it's not their fault, but you, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're holding them accountable and you're teaching them how to problem solve in the process. So this is, 
kind of the bigger picture of what to do with Bicker. I gave you that example. If you have any other examples, put them in the comments. I can do lives on, on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, wherever you need me to be. I could do a live and just kind of interact like this and say, okay, well, this for this situation. But, you know, I gave the toy. Um, you have to understand that a lot of times the siblings will bicker because they want your attention. So again, it, it's what kind of attention are you giving them? Right now they're getting attention from you by having a negative behavior. So let's try to switch that around so that they're getting the attention when they're doing something right. So when you're going through this process, they came up with a solution. It's like, hey, we're not fighting over this toy anymore. It's actually working. That's when you give them their attention. Um, it may get worse before it gets better, but again, don't forget takes time to learn a new habit. If right up until this point, you never taught them how to handle the situation properly, uh, it's, they're not gonna be able to do it overnight. We can't even do that overnight. So take your time, invest in it. It could take you maybe three weeks, four weeks, but it's, I mean, how many years have you been going through this right now? So, you know, a couple of weeks is really not that bad considering you're gonna probably have another 20 years of it if you don't deal with it. It's a bit of an investment, but it's worth it in the end. Um, I, again, I gave the fighting over a toy because that's a very common thing, but it could also just be for your attention. So I mentioned in the last episode, uh, devoting them time, just one on one, your full attention, 10 to 15 minutes and you're busy. You don't have to give them a full day. Um, just, they get to choose the activity and they get to lead the activity. You don't boss them around, you tell them. And by doing that, that is the way to tell them you have my full attention because you're telling me what to do. You're not distracted. You're not thinking of other things. You may be, but because they're leading you, they're telling you what to do. They're telling you which color, if they're you're coloring, okay, use blue for this. Even if it's a tree trunk and you're like, yeah, but the tree trunk is brown. But they want you to paint blue. Yeah, let's do blue. That's fine. It doesn't matter. What does that change in your life? At least they're not fighting. So that's what I have for you. I hope that helped. There will be more. I am going to talk about uh, yeah, one of the episodes that I'm going to be doing is uh, children that don't want to do homework and children who love to throw tantrums in public how to handle that with positive discipline uh and again if you have anything like i mentioned before this, this is for i'm not talking about the children that doesn't know how to properly express their emotions their frustrations and or they just want attention from you and how we can deviate that to in a healthy way so that when they grow older they they are equipped with the right tools so that's what i have for you don't forget to check out the self-esteem doctor online academy i'll leave the link in the description there's a whole bunch of resources that can help as well in um, regulating your children's emotions and how to build up their self-esteem and their confidence so that they can take their place as an individual and express themselves properly so uh i hope this helped again just let me know in the comments it helps me a lot to know what kind of content to send you uh there will be a lot more i've decided i will i will talk about the hard things because nobody's talking about them so i figured i'd give myself a challenge and uh so i'll leave you with that right now until then stay safe stay awesome don't forget to like subscribe and follow and we'll talk soon